Is Bad Bunny doing bad business, or is his ex asking for too much for too little in her $40 million lawsuit against him? I'm Doma T. Pongo, and this is MTV News. Need to know. Bad Bunny's ex-girlfriend, Carlise De La Cruz Hernandez, is suing him for using her voice without her permission. She's responsible for the sultry vocal we hear on the Bad Bunny Baby tag. Benito and De La Cruz dated on and off between 2011 and 2017. According to the lawsuit, which was filed in Puerto Rico, Bad Bunny would ask her opinions on songs, and she acted as his legal counsel. And fans heavily speculated that he cheated on her, even though there's been no verification from either party. De La Cruz says that she recorded the phrase on her phone in 2015 in her friend's bathroom before Bad Bunny became a global phenomenon. She claims that the drop, as producer and artist taglines are often called, is used on his 2016 single, Pati, and 2022's Dos Mil Dieciséis. While most tags, including this one, are usually very short, they serve as audio signatures, sometimes appearing in multiple records and playing a huge role in how artists brand themselves. But De La Cruz allegedly never saw any money for her involvement. Bad Bunny and his team offered payment for the recording ahead of his last album's release, but agreements were never met, and those records were dropped anyway. Now De La Cruz is seeking $40 million, saying her distinct voice is being used without her permission. Any use of a sound recording featuring someone's voice in a musical work usually entitles them to some form of compensation. But there's no set guideline or rubric for this. For example, when Sahaba Prince was on The Breakfast Club in 2017, he described a studio session with Ye, who he said gave credits to anyone who inspired even the smallest ideas. If you delivering waters, if you the engineer, if you the cameraman, if he asks you one thing about this song, your name is on the record. All you gotta do is be in the brainstorming. Artists and writers determine compensation and accreditation amongst themselves, and it's always easier to do this before the songs come out. Copyright lawyer Richard Stem explains. It's important to have these conversations early, well before streams of revenue begin flowing in or hard feelings arise. If you wait until after you have revenue, you could end up sorting out money and payments with band members who have long since left the group or who become more self-interested. Artists like Beyonce, Kendrick Lamar, and Nicki Minaj have all faced accusations of using sound bites without permission. But when former romances are involved, it gets even trickier. And we have seen this before. In 2012, Drake was slapped with a lawsuit by ex-girlfriend Erica Lee over the use of her voice in the viral hit Marvin's Room. Lee said they were involved romantically when they collaborated on the song. For her contributions, including the part that goes, are you drunk right now? She claims she wasn't given proper credit. They later settled out of court. Then you have cases where contributors don't ask for anything. Take one of the most recognizable drops in hip hop, Rick Ross's Maybach music. During that recording session in 2006, Ross and Jay-Z were hanging out with some models from Australia. One of the models, Jessica Gomes, said the rappers took a liking to their accents. And then they told us to, you know, say a couple of lines in front of the track. It was like, what is this? And then I say, Maybach music. And then my friend goes, I like this Maybach music. And then we both say, sweet. Gomes didn't know that she was on Mad Rick Ross records until years later. And even though she jokes about being old money, she's never sued Ross or even criticized him publicly. In a lot of these cases, tags come from random, organic moments whether it was a producer lifting a line from an artist who shouted them out, or an old friend or fling who gave something casually that later became iconic. But when you've got records like Pati and Dos Mil Dies He Says that have garnered almost a billion streams on YouTube and Spotify, that business has got to be handled. And if it goes De La Cruz's way, that comes with the $40 million price tag. I'm Doma T. Pongo, and that's what you need to know.